Lucifer is a messenger of light. That's what it says here, an angel of light. The word angelos means messenger. And so the translators got it right. You have two witnesses now, Isaiah 14, 2 Corinthians 11, 14, that his name is angel of light or Lucifer. That's his name. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works, not their faith, their works. So Lucifer is greatly in the process of transforming church people into little Lucifers, bearers of the image of the presence. That's what the presence told Sarah Young. You have this godlike blessing. You're like a god now because you are the image bearer of the presence. It's Satanism. You're worshiping the beast being led by the false prophet. Come out of that. I've dedicated my life, my ministry, seven times a week in front of a camera, every week, trying to show you that this Bible is the coolest thing you have ever laid your eyes on. It's the stone that the builders rejected. It's the stone that the pastors threw out. Said, we can't use that to build our new hip hop church. And they started going to these other Bibles. And now, because there was nothing in there, it's like eating Rice Krispies for breakfast. You eat it, an hour later, you are starving to death. Because that's what they fed you at church. And so now, Sid Roth promoting it. Now churches all over the country, all over the world, promoting it, number one, to women. I mean, the, the cover of this book, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. The cover of this book is all nice and pretty. It's for women. And then it's for children who have this spiritual void in them and pastors won't fill it with the word of God ever. So now they're falling, they're being duped for this stuff. And this present spirit, this familiar spirit wants to turn you into a light bearer. That's what they want to do. They want to transform you and your family members and your pastor and your pastor's wife into these little Lucifers. Oh, pastor, we, we worship Jesus at our church. Which one? Which, uh, just a legitimate question. Which one? Because there's two of them. And the moment you walked away from the King James Bible, Satan started introducing to you the other Jesus, very subtly, very snakily introducing to you through another spirit and emotional experiences another Jesus and this other Jesus was a love maker like you've never had before and he got you and you're hooked on the heroin of his presence and if you dare try to leave they will treat you and persecute you and beat on you so bad because they don't want you to leave. They don't want you to give up. They don't want you to walk away from it. And you come to the conclusion, you know what? This is not in the Bible. I'm not falling for it. I'm going to get my Bible out and read it. They will, they will try to kill you. If God would let them, they would try to kill you. Maybe this is what was going on with me this morning. I don't know. Uh, I think 
I think the devil is a beast, and I think um, I think these I think these beasts can smell a revival. Uh, I they did it in the days when Moses was born, and they did it in the days when Jesus was born. Um, here is one of the other statements from the presence. Most of mankind's misery stems from feeling unloved. <laughs> no. Man's misery is caused by self-love. Sin. That's where man's misery. See, that's not that's not Jesus. Jesus did not say that. Because Jesus knows what the cause of misery is. Because he told Adam and Eve what was going to happen now that they broke God's law. They were going to live in the state of misery. Festus misery, actually. And here's one more. I knew that God communicated with me through the Bible, but I yearned for more. Increasingly, I wanted to hear what God has to say to me personally on a given day. I yearned for more. So this woman said, the Bible is not good enough for me. It's like the pastor or the youth pastor or the conference speaker who says and justifies the stories that he tells, the quotations he makes from Gandhi, Ronald Reagan, Napoleon, and it basically says that you can't under, really understand the Bible. So we're going to we're going to kind of lay it aside and we're going to give you a feeling. First of all, we're going to turn the music up and get you to bouncing around and swaying and feeling music. Then we're going to inject this message into your subconscious and you're going to start feeling a presence that you've never felt before. Not even when you got saved. That's what we're going to do. And folks, I'm telling you, if anybody ever made you feel bad because you decided I can't find a church anywhere to go to and I'm just you know what we're just gonna watch Bethel if anybody ever made you feel bad well you're not you're not one of us you're not a Christian because you're you're forsaking the assembly no no I'm not I'm not forsaking the assembly I assemble with Bethel every time they turn the cameras on I'm there they made you feel bad, called you names, blocked you, unfriended you on Facebook because, and, and get ready. Because when we get done here with this, and I, I'm already spilling into Thursday with this. Um, I, I, you know, we could talk about Syria. I, we could talk, I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see how that thing plays out. I tweeted over the weekend when Barack Hussein came out and made that statement. I'm going, sorry, Mr. President, uh, you bankrupted this country's confidence in you. And I don't believe a word you say, not one word. Now, I don't believe some of the other conspiracy theories that are out there, but I don't believe that man when he comes out and says what he says. He's lied too many times. There's all kinds of things to talk about. I think that this is important. Number one, hopefully it will bolster your confidence in sola scriptura. Only the word of God. Only the written scriptures of the word of God. Hopefully it will, it will embolden you to stand taller, stand firmer on the word of God. Stand for it like you've never stood before. And you guys, some of you know me, know my testimony. There was a time when I might have fallen for this. 
because I was looking for those experiences. I, 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 was, I was Sarah Young because I had been brought up in church, trained in Sunday school, taught systematic theology in Bible college, but I wanted more. And I, I was going to build a house of my life and my career and reject the cornerstone of the King James Bible. That's what I was going to do. And God chastened me. And I mean, God tore me up. The story has not been told of what God did to me those many years ago. But I'm telling you, he got my attention and then very lovingly directed me into the pages of the King James Bible. And every time I prayed, I, I still say, God, I want dreams and visions. Oh, yeah, I want dreams. And, and God say, hey, guess what? Uh, the prophets all had dreams and visions. Here they are right here. Why don't you read those? And I went, God, you know what? You're right. I, I haven't even read some of these. I, you know what I wanted? I wanted God to cheat with me and just give me the answers without reading the book. That's what I wanted. And God knew it. But get ready, because after this broadcast, I'm gonna, we're going to do the rendering. We're going to post it on Sermon Audio. We're going to get it out there. Jazz is going to take it, put it on uh, wherever she puts it. I am keep up with half of where we are right now. And I want you to find it. I want you to put it on your Facebook page. I want you to tweet it. I want you to email it to people. I want you to send it to them. Not for my popularity. But people need to be told the truth. The trumpet is going to be sounded. Let me let me kind of give you, uh, let me kind of give you where I'm going to go Thursday. With this, I'm going to I'm going to continue on with this. Uh, between now and Thursday, if you if you want to send me any more relevant information on um, Jesus calling or God calling or anything related to that, I mean I'll look at it and try to use it just to try to you know, blend it back in with, and so we can take off with it. But next, this Thursday, I'm going to give you the scripture side of it. I'm going to show you what's happened. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to turn to you, or you can turn to Mark four, or you can just listen as I read it. And I'm going to show you how the devil works and what he's done. Mark chapter four. This of course is the famous parable of the seed and the sower. And if you're one of these that says, well, I don't, I don't get my doctrine from parables. You know what? That's just too bad because you're missing out on some good stuff in the word of God. Jesus is, is essentially telling you, this is how I speak. This is the symbols that I use. This is how I explain the symbols. It's all in the word of God. Had Jesus simply told us this story of the seed and the sower and left it at that, then maybe we would have an excuse to say, you know what? I think God is telling me that the seed is pizza and some people just don't like pizza, but I like pizza and I'm a good guy. And you know, people would come up with all kinds of stupid stuff, but he didn't, he didn't leave it up to us. He said, let me, let me just tell you what it is. The seed is not pizza. It's the word of God. It's the word. And so he says, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside.